dream a little dream of me. Welcome kindreds, it's Jessica the Story Witch and this is the second episode in my Astrology for Witches series. So if you've watched episode one and you've done your homework, then you should now have a natal chart printed out or saved somewhere or on your phone. Even if it literally means nothing to you and you don't understand it at all, that's totally fine. But if you've done the in more in-depth homework as well is that you will have like a kind of brainstorm sheet on the different signs, you'll have a brainstorm sheet on the planets and they're kind of what they represent. So if you've done all those things, 10 gold stars for you because you have done all of the homework. If you haven't done those things, don't panic, but you will be wanting your natal chart. This episode is going to be about the signs and one of the criticisms of astrology usually is that you know how can it be you know it, it must be bullshit because there's no way that everybody who is born between you know these seemingly arbitrary dates are the same but what people who criticize astrology for that don't take into account is that all of us have all of the signs you know that is necessarily how it is in the zodiac but obviously each of us when we are born the sky is there <laughs> so we don't have you know even though people like oh well so and so is prominent in my charts and stuff and definitely there will be certain signs and things that will be more prominent in your chart than others all of us have all of the zodiac because all of us are born on earth I generated two charts just kind of random charts I, uh, to kind of use as examples this one, so you can see around the wheel of the edge here are all the different signs. And then within these segments, the spokes of the wheel are the planets. So we're not gonna worry about the planets today. We're gonna talk about the signs. What you will know, probably, if, you, if, you, you know, if you're very new to astrology, some of you obviously will know all of your placements of all of the planets in your chart. But for those of you who only know like you might know your star sign as they call it well star signs are our sun signs so your star sign is the sign that the sun was in when you were born but we all have all the planets so, you know we also have a moon sign we also have an, a rising sign we also have all of the planets <laughs> we have mars and venus and jupiter and saturn so we will cover all of that but for today's episode, I'm just going to be talking about the signs themselves. The signs, there are 12 of them because the zodiac is split into 12 segments. As I said in the introduction video, I am using the Western sidereal for uh, tropical form of astrology. So if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's just that this is the kind of usual western approach there is also like an eastern approach to astrology which uses a slightly different zodiac but again that still has the 12 signs so knowing that information stands you in good stead whatever kind of school of astrology you are going to follow and if you just want to know understand your natal chart brilliant that's fine too because that is what we are working towards so the first way to think about the signs is in a kind of progression from Aries where the vernal equinox is in the northern hemisphere and progressing all the way around the zodiac until we get to Pisces and you might notice if you printed out your chart that the way that the zodiac wheel goes round is actually anti-clockwise so you start with the the vernal equinox here and the sun travels this way around so this would be your first sign then this then this then this then this you know as you go through your chart Aries is the first sign and that is significant because we normally think of Aries as being it's the sign of the ram it's a kind of forward moving you know it's a <laughs> sometimes gets criticized for being kind of too strong headed and too much kind of like me 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 but it's that kind of energy of youth and exuberance and of kind of pushing things forward and so it's one of you know it's the it's the first sign of the zodiac so it is the younger sign of the zodiac and is as we often are in our younger days focused on the self 
and the self in relation to world. You know, I'm not saying that everyone who has got an ear, who's very Aryan is self-centered or selfish, but it has definitely got that energy of the self projecting itself out onto the world. And then the next sign as we go around is Taurus, which is an earthier, more mature sign, but still not super mature. It's still, it's to do with like the kind of physical body and almost like changes in the physical body and sexuality and earthiness. It's that kind of vibe, slower energy definitely than Aries and lots of people they'll talk about the signs in kind of terms of masculine and feminine I don't find that super helpful but perhaps I, I tend to think of them more as like push and pull signs so and that they alternate like that as you go around so that Aries is, is a kind of push outward energy kind of sign whereas Taurus is a pulling of the energy in to itself and to the ground kind of sign and then we move on to Gemini which is kind of the the twins you know and people talk, talk about Gemini's as being kind of two-faced and things like that sometimes fear often not fear I have set my son is in Gemini so I take offense to that sometimes <laughs> but it is a sign about kind of you've you've had that kind of me 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 of of Aries and that earthy body centered of Taurus and then it's more onto the kind of thoughtful uh intellectual I think intellectual is probably stretching it a little bit, but thinking, you know, it's a thinking sign and it's also a kind of seeing the bigger picture, not just the body and self kind of sign. And also still very playful, still a young sign, still only the third sign in the zodiac. So, and then as we go round after tour, after Gemini, we have Cancer and that people give Cancers a hard time as well because they like, they're moody and emotional <laughs> and you know Gemini is one of those outward signs so Cancer is one of those inward pulling in kind of signs so Cancerians can you know if a Cancer in a chart is about it's about pulling in that kind of watery energy there's a lot of deep feeling and if you think about the crab which is the emblem of that sign there's that kind of like hard exterior but a soft very very soft interior that needs protection and that is why cancerians can sometimes be a bit like um feel a bit biting just because they are protecting themselves very protective caring sign so and I know I'm zooming through these really fast that is deliberate because we're going to look at them in a few different ways so we will be looking at all the signs again <laughs> I hope this approach is making sense I've seen people try and teach astrology in lots of different ways and the problem with it is is that really you need to understand the signs the planets and the house system the houses or placements before you can really start to make sense of it all and there's like no one perfect way of transmitting that information and of getting, you know, get helping people to kind of latch into it. But it's, uh, it's, I think it's helpful to look at it in a few different ways. I hope this approach is going to be useful anyway. So after cancer, then we have Leo, which is, it's like the second wave, you know, we've gone through the first four signs and now we're on to Leo, which is a pushing outward another fire sign and it is about how we kind of project ourselves into the world but like on a bigger stage whereas Aries is more about like kind of I am myself Leo is more like look at me <laughs> look who I am it, it is that almost uh showy and sometimes people can accuse Leos of being kind of egotistical but they just are it is a, and I'm, I'm saying they, and I don't want to speak about it like that. I'm naturally kind of slipping into that kind of speak because, you know, who are they, the, ch the children of Leo? You know, it's hard to sort of, no one is one sign, but Leo traits generally are that kind of, sometimes performative and they get, they get torn down because of that. They'll sort of say, oh, you're just all about showing off and things like that. And there's not a lot of substance behind it. But again, you know, that that can also be unfair. So Leos often have a kind of quiet strength behind their 
showiness. There's, there's more there than meets the eye. And then we have Virgo, the Virgin, and it, <laughs> it's like all of the signs get a bad rap for certain things, and Virgos get a bad rap for being like anal, basically. They're like, this has got to be like this, and this has all got to be organised and sorted out, and you know, it's they get a bad rap for that, but that is only because we don't necessarily value that organisation and... You can have a healthy expression of these signs and you can have an unhealthy expression of those signs. And Virgo is a sign that is very much about health and body and optimising that health by doing the right things. And for some people they find that annoying, <laughs> especially if you're not an earthy sign. So that, that can cause some problems for Virgos who, do, who get kind of misunderstood and like I said, kind of accused of being overly organising or compartmentalizing or micromanaging or sometimes as parents, you know, people will say like, you're just too, you're doing everything for them and you're getting it all too, you're over organising. But you know, it's just a matter of perspective. <laughs> Lots of signs could be accused of under organising. And then we have Scorpio, which probably gets the worst rap of all the signs. It is a very, it's an out-pushing sign. It is a very sexual-oriented sign. But weirdly, a lot of the Scorpios, or maybe not weirdly, a lot of the Scorpios I know don't necessarily fit into that category. It is, they do, but not in a, like, Sometimes people will mistake a Leo for a Scorpio because um, because they because Leos are kind of like attractive and personable and sexy, but the Scorpio sexiness is a more kind of like smouldering, not obvious sexuality. Somehow it's it's a more you feel it in your genitals rather than seeing it with your eyes, if that makes sense. It's that watery drawn towards. You know, like when you just want somebody but you can't figure out why you want them. And yeah, there's a lot of depth, a lot of deep, deep depth to Scorpio, which is often very not shown on the surface. And then we have... Oh, I missed, I missed Libra. <laughs> I was thinking that we've gone like kind of in, out, in, out. We haven't actually done it correctly. So... We've got, we've got after, after Virgo, there's Libra, which I totally missed out. And it is actually my own ascendant, so that is my bad. So Libra is like the kind of halfway point of the wheel. And Libra is the, it's the scales, it's the balance. It is like sitting on the fence. <laughs> It is that energy, that kind of eerie, thoughtful energy, which wants everything to be fair and equal, but then sometimes does not push those things into action. It's also about kind of self in relation to others. And that is where the wheel, you know, you can tell you're halfway around the wheel now in terms of age of the zodiac, because this sign is a sign about, it's not just me now, it's me and the people around me. And not in a, how can I project myself within the people around me, you know, onto the people around me or with the people around me. It's more about how you, you're seeing it from the perspective of the other people. And Libra is kind of the first sign that does that. So yeah, Libra takes the perspective of, of the community or of the other and, and balances that against the perspective of the understanding of self. And then we get Scorpio, which then kind of it's Scorpio is that kind of then deep introspection of the self kind of sign. So it's that other step up then of maturity of kind of looking. It's the shadow sign. It's the time when you sort of go, oh, there's, there's parts of me which I didn't realise were me. I was kind of projecting them out as them. And then you kind of realise, shit, they're actually me. And so you have to kind of probe those watery depths and figure out what that's all about and then we have Sagittarius which is it's like the big sister or big big brother of Gemini so whereas Gemini is kind of about 
being busy and about and connections and and sort of fun trips with friends and things like that. Sagittarius is about the big journeys in life and you know you can see this second half of the zodiac being about the kind of larger things in life. It's almost like the first six signs are more the mundane, the kind of minor arcana if you are a tarot reader and then the second half is the more the major themes kind of major arcana but not to, that is not in any way a value judgment because even though we think of those things as major and minor and those things can sometimes bring in value the minor you can't have one without the other the one is balanced upon the other and so it one is not better than the other it just is showing where a kind of focus of life is at that particular moment in time so yeah Sagittarius is like the big dreams the big goals truth freedom it's about like taking those interesting ideas those interesting maybe Gemini Geminian ideas and then shooting them out into the world and really kind of uh, firing them up into the sky so that everybody can see them you know it's that kind of that's why it's an arrow for the sign and then we have Capricorn another much maligned sign which <laughs> is is a sign again of sometimes of nitpicking and of kind of toil and again organization but also of, of ambition and achievement is a sign of of having big ideas in the world and doing the hard work it takes to make that idea into a reality so it is a, a really hard working sign it is a sign that that shows the area of your life you know where Capricorn is in your chart will show you where you will are prepared to put the work in so yeah, it's an interesting sign in that respect. Again, an earth sign. I don't want to say too much about the elements because I'm going to go back through the signs and talk about the elements next. <laughs> and then after Capricorn, we're nearly at the end of the zodiac now. So we then have Aquarius. Aquarians, such an interesting sign. So Aquarius is like the, the mad inventor kind of sign. It is the crazy ideas they're almost always like if, I'm saying they again don't mean to <laughs> I just can't help it so that Aquarius nature is to be almost ahead of its time it's so forward thinking that people can't necessarily understand or earth those ideas so it can be like whoa where'd you get that idea from you know or, or if some people find that challenging especially if your nature is if you haven't got much going on in that Aquarian sign and you're more kind of earth and water based it can be can be frightening but for people with a more fire and air balance in their chart it can be exciting it's innovative it is you know it's it's always about tomorrow it's always about the kind of collective as well rather than being about the individual so it is that kind of thinking about what would be good for the world as a whole rather than what would be good for me as an individual you know in that way that that like i said the first half of the zodiac is the more minor self in relation to world kind of things whereas the second half is more self and world and the self part kind of gets a little bit smaller because it is the is the what is the what I can do for the world what I can do for my community is more prominent in that top half or what I do out in the world I suppose you know yeah and different people will have different interpretations for these signs obviously and you can google all of these signs and find masses of information on them all but there is consensus with a lot of what I've said here <laughs> and then the last sign of the zodiac is Pisces the fishes and it's the last sign so it is often seen as kind of the the ending of the cycle before the beginning of the new cycle it is the sign of of death but not like a death a 
personal death, but like kind of the death of the structures. It's also a sign of like hopes and dreams. It is a sign of, of daydreaming and night dreaming. It is a sign of, of vision and often the kind of visions that that speak right into your heart and that you can't necessarily translate them out to a wider audience. They are visions revealed to you, kind of like arcane wisdom kind of vibe. So that is a Piscean kind of energy. Okay, so that was the signs, just a very quick whistle stop tour of the signs as we go around the zodiac. And now I wanna talk about the signs in terms of their elements. So there are four elements, earth, air, fire, water, as far as the signs go in the zodiac. And if you're familiar with tarot, brilliant, because that is already a way in of understanding them from an elemental perspective. So we have the fire signs, which are very kind of out pushing and they're the ones, you know, they're the signs of kind of passion, of creativity, of making your mark on the world of bold adventures. And then we have and so the fire signs are Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. You know, they are in their own way, each with their own kind of special little flavour, but they are the signs of, of fire, the signs of that kind of kindling creativity and also potential for destruction as well. So, you know, think about those signs in terms of that fire element and what that, what that means. And then next we have the earth signs of Taurus, of Virgo, of Capricorn. And again, each with their own different flavor, but those signs are rooted. They are, they are foundational. They are connected with the earth. And the things, you know, like Taurus is, is more kind of like personally earthy and body orientated and kind of many, and personal belongings kind of orientated. And then Virgo is more like, this is how the world should be kind of orientated. And, and the health and well-being as well. And Capricorn then is more like foundational as in this is how the world is and this is how I'm going to make the world be. So even though it is a, an earthy sign, it is, it can, earth can, you can mold earth and change earth as well. You know, you can achieve by building brick by brick by brick, which is kind of the Capricorn ethos, or, you know, climbing the mountain like the sea goat. And then we have the air signs. And obviously with air, we are talking intellect, we're talking kind of curiosity, wanting to know about things, wisdom, knowledge, and you know, suit of swords, which is the suit that gets the hardest rap in tarot. It is sometimes seen as being overthinking things and and destructive, destructive because worldviews and things can be destructive. When we think about the suit of swords, there are a lot of cards in that suit which are can be read usually are read as negative and that is interesting because even though I don't think that's fair that kind of negativity can also come across in the interpretation of the air signs as well so we have Gemini you know which people can can accuse of being kind of like fickle and changing and not not taking things seriously and we have Libra you know wanting everything to be balanced and fair but not always taking action on that. And we have Aquarius, which are like, so forward thinking that people can't get their head around it. <laughs> you know, but those things in themselves are not, there is no value judgment here necessarily. You know, you can place your own value judgment on these things, but it doesn't have to be that way. And then we have the water signs. We have Cancer, we have Scorpio, and we have Pisces. And water, the cups, again, kind of associated with the divine feminine and gets a lot of negativity going its way because of that. It's those sort of qualities of nurturing and nourishing and also feeling 
you know we aren't encouraged necessarily in our present culture to feel things and so the aspect of those signs which is to do with feeling very strongly and, and acting out of feeling is not you know people be like you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to act from your heart okay you can have your little feelings but then you put them to one side and you make the decisions with your head that if you are very prominent in that sign then you won't be able to do that you will and like why should we do that why are we favoring head over heart you know they are equally equally important which i would say is a libra ascendant <laughs> it'll be funny because if you i will obviously pepper in some little bits and information about my own chart and like charts of people i know perhaps in an anonymous way, like I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, so and so's chart. It, it, you'll see these characteristics in people that you know. Um, I'm gonna talk about one last way of seeing the signs, and then I'm gonna give you your homework. The last way we're going to look at the same signs again. I'm hoping, like, my idea was is that with each layer of talking about these, it will add an extra kind of mode of understanding them I suppose. So I also want to talk about how the signs are divided into cardinal, fixed and mutable. The cardinal sign is the start of the season and that makes sense because cardinal signs are signs that are kind of the essence of that element. So we already talked about the element so let's go through and talk about the signs, the cardinal signs. So the way it works perfectly is that each season starts with a cardinal sign and as we go through each season they start with a different element so let me talk about that with a, with a better with an example which will, which will help so we have Aries the cardinal sign cardinal fire starting at the vernal equinox so the first season the first sign in the season of spring I hope you're still following this and I hope this makes sense. So we have Aries, cardinal fire. So when we're thinking about cardinal signs, we are thinking in tarot terms about aces. We are thinking about it hasn't realized itself, it isn't manifested necessarily yet, but it's all that potential. It is the like kind of purest, most, most, elemental expression of that sign. So Aries is cardinal fire. It is fire in its cardinal form and that does not happen again throughout the entire zodiac because the next time we hit fire with Leo it is not cardinal fire anymore you know. So that's another way of looking at the differences between so we can look at the three fire signs, we can look at the three earth signs and we can see that one of them is cardinal, one of them is fixed and one of them is mutable and how that influences their energy. So yeah that cardinal energy is aces, it is pure oomph of that particular energy and again you know if you know tarot and you know the elements, then this is going to really help in the understanding of the energy of the signs. So I'm going to skip to the next cardinal sign. So I'm going to skip over Taurus and Gemini and go straight to Cancer, which is the cardinal sign that starts the season of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Now Cancer is cardinal water. So it is the Ace of Cups. It is that chalice, the grail, the potential for wonderful emotional connections and, and spiritual understanding and those kind of depths of feeling. It is that, that energy. <laughs> and then we have, and this one people, because Cardinal, the next, I'm going to skip over Leo, I'm getting ahead of myself, so skip over Leo and Virgo and I'm going to go on to Libra. And Libra is cardinal air. And lots of people struggle with the idea of cardinal air because air is so difficult to kind of pin down as a concept that uh, an idea of cardinal air is hard to understand. But if you think of it as the Ace of Swords and and like the Libra, Libra is the, is the 
perfection of ear sign because it is, and not perfection in like a value judgment again kind of way, but just that it is the ear of ear, you know, it is the airiest of all the ears because it can't be pinned down to any one thing. And if you think about the Ace of Swords in Tarot, it is that uh, possibility, a whole new worldview, a new paradigm, a whole new opening up of self in the world. So that is what Cardinal A means, and that is Libra. And then we move around, we skip over Scorpio and Sagittarius and we get to Capricorn and Capricorn is Cardinal Earth. It is the Earth that can move Earth. It is the earthiest of all of the Earth. It is the Ace of Pentacles, you know, it is the sign which is concerned with money, ambition and achievement, but also with ancestors, with rootedness in the earth and with our kind of place in the larger web of existence. So Capricorn is that cardinal, it is the uh, cardinal earth, it is the earth f pushing forward, you know, pushing itself forward, even though that's weird. I, Maybe it's the pullingness, the most pulling of the earth signs. You know, if we think about earth and water as being pulling energy, then they are the most, the cardinals of those are the most pulling of those, that element. And the um, cardinal fire and cardinal air, the most kind of pushing of, of that element, if that makes sense, I hope it does. And then in the middle of each season, we have the fixed sign, which makes sense because, you know, the first part of the season is usually quite turbulent and the weather can be changeable. It can still be a little bit of what it can be for. Although, you know, quite often there's a dramatic change, especially, well, with the equinoxes and the solstices, which is where the cardinal points fall. So there is a dramatic change. And then the fix is usually where things kind of settle down. You're like, oh yeah, now it's spring. You know, it, there's a reason why Taurus season, when the sun is in Taurus, is a good time for planting because it is an earth sign and it is a fixed earth sign. You know, it's, it's predictable. <laughs> you know what you're gonna get. It is earth in its kind of, oh, I get this now, kind of earth vibe, you know? It is fixed earth. It, it could be stubborn and, and Taurians do, are stubborn <laughs> but it also is known it's able to be known whereas the cardinal signs are much more like um pushing or pulling you know they're more more and there's more energy there whereas with the fixed signs it is the energy is still there but the energy has been contained so they are fixed they are more contained and more kind of solid in their element. So Taurus is there as, as fixed earth. And then we'll skip over to the next fixed sign, which is Leo. And Leo is fixed fire. So it is fire, but fire contained. Fire in a useful and uh, almost kind of like domesticated space it is fixed fire and then we can skip over to scorpio which is fixed water and fixed water especially in the case of scorpio we are not thinking so much of the ocean perhaps we are thinking more of like a very very deep well or a spring you know, it, of the fixed signs, Scorpio is almost like the most unknowable, but perhaps that is because of the watery and the kind of connection with the underworldness of that sign. That is a sign that is very much a kind of gateway between the worlds, but still fixed in that respect, in that it is a, it is a fixed portal between the worlds. And then we have Aquarius, which is our fixed ear. And if you know Aquarians, they have amazing ideas and or you might be one. <laughs> and again, I'm saying you are one or not. It is, they again, there is that kind of sometimes lack of 
ability to compromise with those amazing ideas and often it is out of frustration because other people aren't getting how wonderful your bloody idea is you know it's like no this is the vision the vision is this we must follow this <laughs> and so even though it is an ear sign it can be fixed in that way you know so stubborn but in a different in a different way from a Taurian being stubborn you know <laughs> and then at the end of each season so at the end of spring end of summer end of winter we get the mutable signs a mutable you know like mutant mutation it is changeable it is the sign that is like it's not cardinal it's not it's not like dominant of its energy it's not fixed it is changing and almost kind of blending a little bit into the next sign that comes the next season that comes so you will see in that last part of each season that the world will start to you know it's a more gradual shift towards the beginning of the next season so these signs are not as I find them more kind of nebulous in their expression and so sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to categorize than the other the other signs so our first mutable sign is Gemini Gemini is mutable air and you know <laughs> what can be more mutable than air it just kind of floats off and changes its shape effortlessly to fill the space that it is in it is it is equally at home in a you know small gathering as in a big crowded festival or something like that you know it is it's adaptability changeability and obviously with the air quality of Gemini as well it is extreme adaptability and changeability and an ability to see lots of different and understand maybe not feel other people's perspectives not so much empathy but to be able to kind of intellectually understand that other people will come from other points of views and like compromise yeah you know because Gemini's won't be fixed at all in their ideas they will compromise 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 until they they've got nothing left you know so that is something that is that mutable air quality and then we have Virgo which is mutable earth interesting so earth is not very mutable is it because it is it's fixed in its self you know it is that kind of it's solid and so even though Virgo is mutable earth it is not as mutable as Gemini <laughs> because earth is is necessarily not as mutable as air if you see what I mean so but still you know we can have muddy puddles with earth we can have frozen earth we can have uh, peat bogs you know earth does come in different different forms uh, but yeah you know it's still it's still within the bounds it's mutable within the bounds of its element if you see what I mean so yeah Virgo is mutable air it, it is more changeable but still within those earthy rooted constraints and then we have Sagittarius which is mutable fire and so that fire changeable fire can be both dangerous because you know wildfire fire can spread and get out of hand and so that Sagittarius quality of perhaps um, sometimes like inspiring people to do the wrong things even you know but also it can be very very innovative and and transformative and exciting so it is that fire mutable changeable fire energy it's sometimes difficult to to pin it down obviously because it's mutable it's changeable and that can make it depending on your own kind of feelings and and personality that can make it either frightening or really really exciting and and draws you in and then the final mutable sign is Pisces which is mutable water and you know water is 
more mutable than earth, less mutable than air or fire. Water can change state. We can have ice, we can have water vapor, it can almost go up to air. And you know, when you're thinking about Pisceans, they spend a lot of time in the clouds. <laughs> so it's that kind of mutable dreamy, that mutable water dreamy floating quality that you often find with heavy Piscean influences in a chart. So that is it. We have looked at the signs in terms of going around the zodiac in kind of progression, if you want to call it that, and not, as I've said, you know, it's not value. It's not like Aries is the worst sign and then Pisces is the best sign, not at all. You know, it is literally just a progression of kind of, like if you read tarot, like the progression through the majors or through a suit of the minors, you know, it is not, probably through the majors is a better better analogy. It It's not like justice is better than the high priestess. You would never say that, would you? So it is just, it's a journey and different things are learnt as you go around, you know? And the perspective shifts as you go around, the same as with the major arcana. So, so yeah, we've looked at it that way. We've looked at it in terms of the elemental properties of the signs and so you can bundle them up that way you know you can split them into three into four groups of three and then we've also looked at them in terms of whether they are cardinal fixed or mutable and so you can split them up that way as well to kind of add that layer of understanding so I hope I really hope that all makes sense and that has added that way of thinking and it's also from my perspective sowing the seed for some of the things we're going to come to further on down the line as well. So if you can try and understand them in those in those three different ways, that would be great. So homework, your homework for this net until the next one. I'm not sure when I'm gonna film the next one. I'm gonna use again like last time the questions and things and, and things people say in comments to inform what happens next. Although obviously we are gonna be looking at planets and houses. So, but you know, we might need to do a little bit more on signs first, we'll see. Your homework, <laughs> just spit it out. I would like you to find, even though at the very start of this video, I said about how people kind of denigrate astrology because they, they reduce it down to the sun signs. There is a reason why even when you do that, it can be, illuminating. So what I would like you to do for your homework is to try and find somebody who is, who has this sun in each sign. So different people obviously, because <laughs> we only have our sun in one sign. So you know, you need to find somebody who has this sun in Gemini, you need to find somebody who has this sun in Sagittarius, you need to find somebody who has this sun in Virgo. Try and find somebody for all of the signs, different people. Try and find a person for all of the signs. It can be people you know, or you know, it can be celebrities if you want to, or like even like YouTubers or whatever, you know, and and just see how your understanding of that person fits or doesn't fit, you know, because like I said, there's lots of different mitigating things within a chart as well. It's like some people just don't seem to express their sun sign so readily as others and some signs don't express the sun sign as readily as others so that's interesting to see as well so find somebody for each sign and just have a little think or you can make notes if you want to about whether that person expresses the qualities of that sign in terms of you know whether it's cardinal whether it is what the element is of that sign and what the kind of properties of that sign are, the, the traits, I suppose, of that sign are. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> so shorter homework, but maybe more outreaching homework, I guess, this time. And yes, I will leave it there because I know this video is probably horribly long. Warmest, warmest blessings, and I will see you very soon. Mm, da -da 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 -da. Ah.